what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at Android 13 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now when it comes down to it I've tested a lot of versions of Android on the Pi. It's getting better and better but this one here is pretty amazing. I mean I've been getting really great performance out of this and once again this is coming to us from Constacang. This is their Android 13 AOSP build and right out of the box there's no Google Apps installed. It's pretty bare bones. There's a file manager, there's a browser, and custom Raspberry Pi settings. So we can tweak and tune the CPU, we can change the governor, we can actually overclock from the settings and everything like that just like they did with their older builds of Android. But this one is really quick. In this video, we're going to be testing out this version of Android 13 on the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to take a look at some video playback, the settings, we'll test out some native Android games, and some emulation. But before we completely jump into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically, that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so with this build here, I have installed Google Play, and if you're interested in getting this up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4, I would highly recommend heading over to YouTube and check out Nova Spirit Tech's tutorial video. He shows you how to install this and get Google Play up and running on it. I thought about doing a tutorial, but I saw that he recently posted one, so definitely check it out if you want to get Android 13 running on your Raspberry Pi 4. So with this build here, we do have Vulkan support, we've got OpenGL. Basically, the only thing that's not working on this, which wasn't working on a lot of versions of Android, is hardware video decoding and encoding. You can use software, or you can go into the settings and enable the experimental feature, but personally, I haven't had much luck with it. Other than that, this has been really snappy. And keep in mind, is video encoding and decoding, you can still use that GPU for emulation and gaming. All right, so let's head over to the settings real quick. I'll show you what we got going on here basic Android 13 settings, but if we head down to system, we do have a dedicated Raspberry Pi settings option. And from here, we can change the audio output. It's at 3.5 now, but I've got it plugged into HDMI. We've also got display resolution, display rotation. You can enable or disable a touch screen. It also works over USB. We've got the CPU clock from 1.5 gigahertz, which is gonna be stock when you install this, up to two gigahertz. We've got the CPU governor. I've got mine at performance. ADB, and at the very bottom we do have that hardware video decoding. So this is very experimental, but like I mentioned, I haven't had much luck with it. I usually get a green screen when I'm trying to decode any kind of video. But even YouTube video playback on a software renderer does work really well up to 720p 60fps with this build. So here we are at YouTube, and I'll go ahead and reset all this, get it back to the beginning. I'll make sure that we're at 720p. 720p 60, we'll even go full screen with it, and we get some really good playback. Now going full screen on the Raspberry Pi can kind of bring it to its knees on other operating systems, at least in the past that I've seen. But full screen here with Android 13, 720p 60fps functions perfectly fine. But as soon as we jack this up to 1080, 60, it does fall on its face. So we'll head back to the settings, make sure that we're at 1080, 60. Give it a second to swap over. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. And there it is. So we got tons of stutter there at 1080-60, but 720p-60 is fully watchable in my opinion. 
Next thing I wanted to do is check out a little bit of native Android gaming. And by the way, Bluetooth is fully functional with this build. I've got an Xbox One controller connected wirelessly, and we've got Stardew Valley running really well. So this is definitely an easier one to run. I got this from Google Play, but these lighter 2D games are going to run just fine with this build on the Pi 4. Now we're going to move over to an older 3D game just to see what happens here. And this one is Real Racing 3. Been on the market for a while, but it's one I always like to test on low-end hardware. And this seems to be performing just as well as the S905 boxes that we've seen on the channel. Now don't expect this to run PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile at full speed, but there's still going to be a lot of games that are fully playable on this. And the last one I wanted to test here was Dead Cells. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and the first one we have here is Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator from Google Play. We're at the native resolution, FPS is up in the top left hand corner, and we're getting great Dreamcast emulation out of this setup with Android 13. I also wanted to test out a little bit of PSP emulation. Tekken 6, 1x resolution, Vulcan back end. Great performance. I mean, I haven't seen this dip under 60. I know it's a bit hard to see, but that FPS is up in the top right-hand corner. This is a mid-range game to emulate, and I did test out Chains of Olympus, but that one you still need to turn frame skip on. I mean, that's just how it is with that game. And the final one we have here is PS2 using EtherSX2. So we're on the unsafe presets, Vulcan back in, and I've got this at 0.5 resolution. Now there are some more tweaks that we could do to get this to run a bit better, but in the end, this is actually an easy game to emulate, and as you can see, the Pi 4 just isn't putting out enough power for PS2 emulation. Now there might be some 2D games that work well with this emulator on this setup, but I wouldn't put this together specifically for PS2. But one thing that actually surprised me here was the cloud gaming performance. Now with this, you definitely want to be connected over Ethernet. We're going to be testing out Game Pass, so Xbox Cloud Streaming. And uh, again, I've got an Xbox controller connected wirelessly to the Raspberry Pi. App loads up, everything's really responsive. And uh, I'll head over here to Forza Horizon 5. We'll start it up. And I was actually hoping it would jump right back in the game, but I must have shut it down. So we'll just skip right into a little bit of gameplay here. And overall, it's not bad. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect because it's cloud gaming, but this is working better than I've ever tested on the Raspberry Pi so far. I've gone through a few different operating systems trying to get at least Game Pass and GeForce Now up and running properly. And this performance increase could come down to Microsoft's side of things, you know, getting their servers up and running a little better. But it is working pretty well, as you can see here. So yeah, it's actually really awesome to see Android 13 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now you can always get this installed from an SD card, a USB drive, or a USB hard drive if you want to. And it's definitely worth giving it a try. It's actually a lot of fun to mess around with these new operating systems. So, you know, if you want to get this up and running, I'll leave a link to Consta King's website in the description. And if you want to get Google Play installed, I'll leave a link to Nova Spirit Tech's YouTube channel. He's got that full tutorial over there. And if any new developments come up with the Raspberry Pi and Android, I will make another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.